So the Core Ultra 265K didn't have the best launch, but what if I told you after BIOS updates and overclocking, it can get up to an insane 49% faster? Let's talk about it. Before that, this video is brought to you by VIPCDKDeals.com. CDK Deals is a website dedicated to getting you the best prices on games and software, and right now you can get a Windows 10 Pro OEM key for an insanely low price. Just find the best price and apply my special discount code GPC20 for an additional 30% off. You can also check out securely with PayPal, and once the payment is cleared, you should get access to the code both in your account as well as in your email. In order to activate the new copy of Windows 10, just search Activate Under Windows and type in your key. So if you want to learn more, be sure to click the link in the description below. Alright, so today I'll be comparing an overclocked Core Ultra 7 265K to an overclocked 9800X3D to determine if it's worth saving $100 to go Intel now that the power draw is so much lower and the performance has improved via updates or if you should still just stick with AMD. But before we jump into this test, I want to real quickly thank Intel and Zydex for making this video possible by sending over the Zydex X6 gaming PC, which came with a 265K, a 360 AIO, and a lifetime warranty. But I'll actually be swapping out the GPU for an RTX 49 throwing in this kit of extremely fast 48 gigabyte 8400 mega transfer CL40 DDR5 kit that was sent to me by Kingston which made a very big difference and after testing a ton of boards sent to me from MSI, Gigabyte, ASRock, all of which were really excellent in terms of performance as well as looks and features. Well, as of the recording this video, the ASRock Z890 Tai Chi OCF Extreme Overclocking Motherboard currently gave me the best clock speeds and allowed me to gain a huge increase over the stock performance. Plus, it looks absolutely beautiful and is my favorite Z890 board to date. So if you're interested in any of these parts I use in the video, I'll have affiliate links to them in the description below. But now let's move on to the actual testing. I mean, what did my core eCore ring die to die in fabric overclocking actually net me in nine different games. By the way, I'll have the specifics of the overclocks in the description below, but let's start off first with Baldur's Gate 3 720p Ultra to make sure that no GPU bottleneck would happen whatsoever. And here we can see that the Core Ultra 7 265K after the BIOS updates and overclocking actually got an absolutely insane 29% increase, both in terms of the average frame rate and the 1% lows. And that's a type of margin that I have not seen in many, many years. In fact, it's such a massive gain that it now puts it roughly on par, I'd say, with the 7800X3D it has better 1% lows, but much worse average frame rate. So you could argue maybe the 7800X3D would be a bit better still, but regardless, that is a huge increase in performance and it doesn't stop there. Let's take a look next at Counter-Strike 2 720p high settings. And here, once again, the improvements are in Insane. In fact, even more crazy, the overclocked and BIOS updated 265K is now netting a 49% increase in average frame rate when compared to the stock conditions and a 33% increase on the 1% lows. That actually puts it once again very close to the 7800X3D and actually makes it a competitive choice in today's market at the current price. And next, let's take a look at Cyberpunk 2077 720p RT Max DLSS performance in here. Once again, another crazy 30% increase in the average frame rate and 22% increase on the 1% lows. And crazily enough, at least in terms of the 1% lows, this now makes the Core Ultra 7 265K the best CPU for Cyberpunk 2077 in this test. Although technically, yes, the 9800X3D overclocked does have an average frame rate that is a bit higher. And by the way, I will have the rest of my results on my Patreon linked in the description below. But to move this video along, let's go ahead and now take a look at the nine game average at 720p. And here you can see that actually, when you take a look at the overclocked plus BIOS updated 265K, versus the stock conditions, it is up 31%, both in terms of the average frame rate and the 1% low. I want you guys to let that sink in. When is the last time that a stock to updated and overclocked CPU has ever gotten a 31% increase? It has been a very, very long time. And that's the type of increase that can take it from a mediocre gaming chip to actually a very good one. It is now sitting pretty much right between the 7800X3D stock and the 9800X3D with its overclock. So yeah, this is actually now a very competent gaming chip 
and is something that I don't think you notice a huge difference in the majority of games going between, well, these three different chips. Now, the 9800XRD is still the world's best gaming chip. It's around 14% faster overclocked versus the overclocked 265K. It's around 5% better on the 1% lows, not to mention it absolutely thrashes it if you leave them both in their stock conditions. However, I do want you to also consider the multi-core performance. Now, to be fair, most people are gonna be totally good with a 9800X3D that has a lot of multi-core performance already, but if you really do need more, well, the 265K is just absolutely crazy. We're talking around 58% more performance OC versus OC in the multi-core and 11% higher on the single core. So after all the updates, is the Core Ultra 265K bad as some claim? Well, I would actually say no. For the money, it's actually pretty good for a workstation CPU, as we just saw, around 58% more performance than the 9800X3D for around $100 less, as the 9800X3D, if you can even get it, is typically gonna be around $480, whereas the 265K can be had for $372, over on Newegg right now. However, the stock gaming performance is still very disappointing even after the updates. Don't get me wrong, it's better, but it's just not where I'd like to see it be at this point in time. And while it is insane to see an average increase of around 31% by updating the BIOS and overclocking, it does require more expensive RAM and a lot of time. And really, this is where it should be performing out of the box. And that more expensive RAM, while it is absolutely incredible, and I definitely would recommend picking up a kit, especially of this Kingston stuff that looks great so you can get the max performance out of your chip, that is gonna kind of get rid of the cost advantage of the 265K. And so with that in mind, would I recommend the 265K over the 9800X3D flat out? Well, no, because they're just two different chips for two different people. If you want the lowest power draw and the best gaming without any tinkering, the 9800XRD is still the king for gamers. But if you're someone out there who does want a more overall powerful CPU with more cores, and you're willing to put in some time overclocking, then I actually do think now after all these updates that the 265K is very good. So really, I would highly recommend both chips at their current pricing if you can find them. And I will have affiliate links in the description below if you're interested in one or the other. They just serve totally different people in my opinion. And to give Intel credit, it's a very fun platform. I really do think this is probably the most fun I've had overclocking with any product in probably quite a while, but not everybody's gonna agree with that. And that's why I feel like the 7800X3D and the 9800X3D are still just such awesome gaming CPUs. You throw them in, they work, they're super fast, they sit power even less than the 265K, and they're just a great experience. I just hope that the die to die in fabric of the Core Ultra 200 series when moving to the 300 series is actually overclocked out of the box if they end up doing a refresh of these CPUs because simply overclocking the fabric die to die ring as well as memory to get the latency as low as possible gives these chips massive gains and should draw a whole lot less power than trying to overclock the cores. And when paired with some excellent Kingston RAM at super high speeds and a great motherboard like the Z890 Tai Chi OCF, it would actually allow a refreshed 300 series to go head to head with a 9800X3 out of the box without all this tinkering required. And I think that's where Intel needs to get to. Get to the overclock performance that I showed today, but don't make people jump through all the hoops that I had to to try and make it happen. Listen, I think it's fun, I really enjoy it, but it's a lot more complicated than just going in and ticking a PBO box or simply increasing the core clock speeds. There's a whole lot to overclock, and if you don't wanna get into that and you're worried about breaking hardware, it's just not gonna be a fun experience for you. So there you have it. The 265K has definitely gotten a lot better. The overclocking headroom is insane, and I actually do think that now it is finally a good purchase, but just be aware, if you wanna get the maximum performance, it is gonna require some work and some extra hardware. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and NVIDIA release new GPUs. Also, if you want to see more, check out one of these related videos. You won't be disappointed.